All right, so what is up guys? In the last video, we went over how to create the user interface for this habit tracker. And in this video, I want to go over how to create the necessary folders and the database that is required to make this app function correctly so the user can easily insert values and retrieve values and to keep that data persistent. So when the user closes the app, it will always be there. And of course, this means we are going to create a room database. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a few packages so that we can keep this project nice and clean. And to do that, we are first gonna to go to our Java folder. And in there, there is a com folder that takes us to our project folder. And all we have to do is right click on that and create a new package. And the first one I want to create is for the UI. So this is going to be a UI package. Then we're gonna right click on that again. And I'm gonna call the next package the logic package. So we're going to insert all of our logic in there. And then we're going to create another package, which will be called the data package. And of course, we can just insert anything that's data inside there. And inside the UI package, we're going to create a package that is called fragments. And inside the fragments package, we will create a package for each fragment. And the first one is going to be a create habit fragments package. And then we're going to create one for the other two. So let's go package and it's going to be a habit list fragments package and finally an update habit item. Then we will just put those fragments in each of the corresponding packages and habit list will go in habit list and update habit item will go in update habit. Then inside the UI, we're going to create a package for our view models. So we'll call it view models. And finally, one more package for the UI and this one will be called intro screen and this will take care of our view pager later for when the user starts the app for the first time and that's all we have to add to our ui package next we have to go to our logic package and inside there we're going to create three packages one is going to be for the dao so we'll just type in dao and we can close that for now then we're going to create another one which is going to be for the repository and finally one more that's going to be for our utils but actually I believe we can leave the utils out of this one. So we're gonna drag it to the habit tracker tutorial. So it's just gonna be a global package, just like UI, logic, and data. And then we can move on to the data package. And inside here, we're gonna create two packages. One's gonna be for the database and one more is going to be for the models, the data models. And that will take care of all the packages we need for this project. And I just decided to get it out of the way immediately so I wouldn't have to think about it later. But as soon as we've done that, we can go ahead to our fragments. So let's click on the UI package, go to fragments, and we're gonna start with the create habit item. And as you can see, we have a lot of this random code. So all we have to do actually is copy this r.layout and insert it right in here, where it says fragments. And then we can just destroy everything under besides the last curly bracket and everything above. I can also get rid of the import statements that we do not need. So in the end, we're gonna do this for each of the fragments and it should look simple as this. And the only thing we have to add is on view created. But let's do this for the other two fragments. So let's go to the habit list. Up next, we're gonna to go to our models package and inside here, we're gonna create two data classes. So first, let's go ahead and click on Kotlin file.class and the first one's going to be about the habit. So this is all the data that is pertinent to the habit. So first thing we want to do is actually annotate it with an entity. So we're going to do at entity, which is going to equal habit table. Then inside the constructor of the habit, we are going to add a few values. So the first one we have to add is the key and we want to make it so it auto generates the key. So, so we're going to type in at primary key and we're going to set auto generate to true. Now we have to give it an ID, which is gonna be of type int, and that should take care of the auto generating key for us. Then we need to write a few more data values, such as value habit underscore title, and that's gonna be of type string, then value habit description, and that's gonna be of type string, then value habit start time, which is also gonna be of type string, and finally a image ID, which will be of type int because we want to pass in some drawables. And there's only one more thing we have to do here. And that is to make this a passable, which means we can use it later when we pass from one fragment to another, we will be able to pass this as an argument. 
and we'll be able to retrieve the data in our other fragment. So we're just going to type in add parcelize at the top and at the bottom we need to implement parsable. And that's all we have to do for our first model. Then we can go ahead and create the second model. So let's go and click on kotlinfile.class and this is going to be the intro view and it's going to be another data class and inside here we're just going to give it a value of description which is going to be of type string and a value of image id which is going to be of type int and this is going to be for our intro screen so we don't have to worry about this for now and that's all we have to add to this data class and up next let's go to our DAO and create a new interface so we're going to type in kotlinfile.class click on interface and inside here we will type in habit DAO which is a data access object. And to make sure the program knows what we're doing, we're gonna annotate it with at DAO and we should import that. Perfect. Then inside here, we will create a few suspend functions that will tell the program what we should do with the database. So the first one will be at insert and we will define an on conflict strategy, but first let's import that. So on conflict, we'll type in on conflict strategy dot ignore. So if we get something with the same ID, it will just ignore it. Then we will type in suspend function and add the habit, a habit of type habit. And let's import habit from our habit or from our model class. Then we need to define a function that updates an item. So we're gonna type in at update and it's gonna be a suspend function, which will say update habit. And it's gonna take a habit of type habit as well. Then we also want a function that deletes the habits. So we'll do at delete. And we're going to write a suspend function of delete habit. And as you may have guessed it, it takes habit as an argument. And then we also need to define a custom query that retrieves all the habits when we load the app. So we're going to do at query and we're going to use the SQL syntax. So we're going to type in select, uh, select all from habit table. And we're going to order it by ID descending. So it will get the latest insertions and display them at the top. And of course, you can create another function if you want that will display it by the time remaining or something else. But we're just going to be covering this very basic query that will just display it in the order we have inserted it into our database. So the user can always find it in chronological order. And then we will create a function that will say get all habits, except this time we are going to return a live data object, which is going to be a list of our habits. And we are just going to define one more query to make this app nice and simple. And in case the user wants to delete everything, all we have to do is type in delete from habit table. And this will take everything on the habit table and delete it. So it's essentially just a delete all function. And in fact, we will name this delete all and it will take no parameters. And that will take care of our data access object. Then we can go ahead and create the actual database. So we'll go type in new Kotlin file class and inside here we will type in habit database and to create this database we need to make it an abstract class so let's go ahead and type in abstract class habit database and it's going to extend our room database and before we move on we should annotate it with at database and it's going to take some entities and we only have one so we're going to type in our habits class then we have to give it a version number and since this is our first version we'll just type in one and we will set the export schema to false for this example then let's create an abstract function which will be called habit DAO and this will return a habit DAO and right after that we have to create a companion object and inside the companion object we need to create a private var instance, which will take our habit database, which is nullable, and it will be assigned the value of null. And then we need to annotate it with the volatile keyword, which means that as soon as we access it, it will be made visible to all the other threads. So everything is notified immediately as soon as we create it. Then let's type in function get database, and we need to have the context as a parameter and this is going to return a habit database and then we need to create a value of temp instance which is a temporary instance and that is going to be equal to our original instance but if the temp instance is not equal to null then we will return our temporary instance and then we want to create a synchronized block with a lock and this means that this block of code will only be run on one thread at a time. So you will not have multiple instances of it being created at the same time, which saves us a lot of trouble in the near future. So we're gonna type value instance, and that's going to equal a room.database builder. And inside here, we need to get the context, 
which is going to be the application context. And we are going to insert our habit database class. And finally, we need to assign it a name, which is just going to be habit underscore database. Now we have to call dot build. Then we want to assign our instance with this new instance in the synchronized block. And now we can just return the instance. And that's all we have to do to create our database. So now we can move on to the repository. And so what we're gonna do is right click on our repository folder and create a new Kotlin file class. And we're just gonna call it habit repository. And the first thing we're gonna write in here is class habit repository, which is going to take one parameter in the constructor, which is gonna be private val habit DAO. And that's gonna be of type habit DAO. Then we will create a block. And inside this block, we will insert a value that says get all habits. And that's going to be of type live data, which is going to be a list of habits. And let's import habits. And that's going to equal habit DAO dot get all habits. So that should retrieve all the habits for us. Then we need to create a few suspend functions. So the first suspend function we have to create is the add habits suspend function. And that's gonna take a habit of type habit. And inside this block, we'll just type in habit DAO dot add habits and the habit we want to add to the database. Then we're just gonna copy and paste this four times. One, two, or three more times. And we're just gonna change this accordingly. So for the second one, we just want to update the habits. We'll type in update habits and we'll type in update habit here. Then we have one to delete the habits. So all we have to do is type in delete habits and it will take the habit as a argument as well. And the final one doesn't require any parameters. So we can just get rid of that and we can just call delete all. And up here, we'll just type in delete all habits. And that's all we have to do for our habit repository. So it looks really nice and clean. It's very simple and we can finally move on to the view model. So in our UI package, you'll see we have a view models folder and we will right click on that and create a new Kotlin file class. And this one will be named habit view model. And the first thing we have to do in here is add an application parameter and it's going to extend Android view model, which will take that application as an argument. Then inside here, we're gonna create a few values. So the first one's going to be a private value called repository, and that's gonna be of type habit repository. Then we need to create a value that says get all habits, and that's going to be a live data object, which will be a list of habit, which we should also import. And right up next, we need to type an initializer block, which will say value habit DAO, and that's going to call our habit database, and it's going to get our database with the application context, and it's going to call our habit DAO. Then we're going to set the value of the repository to our habit repository and insert the habit DAO. And as you can see, that got rid of the error for our repository. And then we also have to set the value for get all habits. And that's just going to equal our repository dot get all habits. And I messed up here, so this should actually be a colon. So we'll leave that as a colon and we will have no more errors up there. And finally, there's one more thing we should do in this tutorial and that is add the functions to our view model so that we can actually call this in our list fragment. So let's go ahead and add these functions. The first function will be function add habits. And just as we did in our repository, we're just gonna insert the habits of type habits, and we're going to launch a new coroutine, which is gonna take the view model scope, and we're gonna call dot launch. And we want to do this on the dispatches.io thread, and we're gonna call our repository and call add habits with the habit as an argument. And just as we did earlier, we're gonna copy and paste this three more times to try to save some time. And the next one's going to be update habits. And all we have to do down here is type in update habit. Then we have delete habits. And down here we'll type in delete habits. And then we have to delete all habits. So we can just rename this entirely and type in delete all habits. And finally, we will delete all habits. But uh, since it's not showing up, I must have messed up in the repository. So let's go back to our repository. And that's what I did wrong. Instead of deleting all habits, I called it add all habits. So let's quickly change that to delete all habits and go back to our view model. So now if we try to type it in, you'll see that it will appear in the suggestion menu and that will complete our habit view model class. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See you.